Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I'm a valuation expert and divorce mediator in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we will discuss how to find hidden assets and or understated income in divorce cases with Leah Wheat Holter, a forensic accountant, certified fraud examiner, and private investigator in Tulsa, Oklahoma. What about understated income? Why is this concept? Because I don't think people to- like we we briefly talked about it, but let's go a little bit deeper. Like, what is understated income? And it means something different in a business or personal. Mm-hmm. And why is it important in a divorce case? Sure. So I have two examples to kind of explain this. The first one is a personal example. There was, um, uh, it was a, it was actually in a child custody case, child support case. And so these individuals had never been married, but they have this child and, uh, the dad had said that he only made $17,000 a year and that he had this lawn mowing business and, you know, He's like barely paying any child support. Well, the mom, obviously, and thanks to social media, I'm sure, notices how he's living. And, you know, now he's with some other lady and they have kids and, you know, all this stuff. And she's saying, I just don't think that they can go to private school if he is only making $17,000 a year. Like that's all his tax returns show. And so, you know, I'm thinking, okay, sure, we'll look at his, you know, we'll get his bank accounts. And I wanted to help this lady. And, Um, so I'm thinking $17,000, like how complicated could this be? And so we don't typically do fixed fees on this type of case, but I'm like, oh yeah, we we can do this. No problem. Um, I think there ended up being nine or 10 bank accounts for this guy and so many transactions, so many transactions. And so we, um, just decided to run a lifestyle analysis and look at what was he spending money on every month? And really just from a cash basis, like he can say he only brings in X and that his net is 17, but let's look at these bank accounts and see how he's spending it. Uh, Because in order to spend this cash, you have to be earning the cash. So we weren't looking at how much is he putting on a credit card? I don't care. I just want to know how much cash is he spending on a monthly or yearly basis? So we did this. I think we ended up doing this one by category. Um, just for some reason, I don't remember why. So we just kind of categorized, you know, rent, utilities, and various things. And my analyst at the time, she's running this analysis. And she said, Leah, I think, I think this guy is a weed dealer. And I was like, how do you know that? She said, well, you know, I looked him up on Facebook and just judging by how they spend their money, I just kind of get the feeling of like, this guy deals weed. I'm like, okay. Anyway, we end up uh, determining that his average income a year was not 17,000. And we're not talking about gross revenue. We're talking about what he's spending and not uh, business expenses. We were just focusing on personal living and he was spending between 75 and a hundred thousand dollars a year. So uh, his lawn business might have been really bad, but he had something else going on. So before the case ended up settling, so we didn't even have to go to court. But when we thought we were going to have to go to court, I asked the mom, our client, I said, by the way, this is really random. I just think my analyst would appreciate if I asked you, uh, is he, does he deal weed? And she goes, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This might have been good to know ahead of time uh, that like his total income was not being driven by mowing yards, but. um, And a cash basis type of situation. Right. But I think the other thing is that, you know, it doesn't have to be an illegal thing because there's money that comes to you that you report on your um, income tax return. And then there's things like distributions that you'll see a K one that will say $13,000 was distributed to you, but that $13,000 doesn't show up on your tax return. And so, you know, sometimes I, I think part of our job is to really not get emotional and not get tied up in the story, but to really say, okay, let's assume that there's a real answer to this. You know, let's assume that there's probably a decent reason why this is happening. 